The season finale of Taboo did not disappoint. We were given quite a few answers, but still left with some lingering questions. One of the answers we got is what did Sir Stuart do to James? James was one of the boys that Sir Stuart sent to crew his slave ships. And now we know how James went from being in London to getting on the slave ship the influence. It was under Sir Stuart's command. But we also had something else confirmed with Sir Stuart. In a previous video where I talk about uh, the hidden, the underlying meaning in Taboo, I bring up Sir Stuart is the one who is going mad in this show. And we see in this last episode that he actually states he is going insane. The big shock of the episode was Zilpha's death. And I couldn't even believe it when it happened. I I just couldn't believe what I just saw. They killed Zilpha. And this leaves a lot of questions in my mind. If we look at Lorna and James, if Lorna is going to be James's romantic interest, th this is no surprise. From Lorna's initial introduction, when James, Lorna, and Thoit meet in Thoit's office, there is tension, obvious tension between James and Lorna. And it never goes away. They, they highlight it in every episode. Not only is there tension, but there's something else about Lorna in the sense that Lorna is James's equal. We see how competent, capable, confident James James is and Lorna is the same way. There's quite a few scenes throughout the series where they show what a competent, capable woman Lorna is when Lorna visits Countess Musgrove. And the way she handles herself in that, from the start, she walks into the room expecting Countess Musgrove to be alone, and now she has to figure out how do I talk about this secret stuff in front of these two women, and she does a phenomenal job at it. And then when her and Countess Musgrove are alone, and Countess Musgrove tries to intimidate her, both with her power and a knife, Lorna is not intimidated. She keeps her cool and stays in control of the situation. I mean, this is James. One other interesting point about Lorna is Lorna's really a, a good person. She's kind of a virtuous person. She's perhaps the most virtuous person in the entire series, and she definitely shows this. We see this in her multiple times. When James reads Zilpha's letter and Lorna walks in, Lorna does not act virtuous at all, and I suppose it is debatable where her intentions in this conversation were when she's trying to convince James to get on the ship, but I don't think her intentions were that she was trying to get James to do what was best for James. I think Lorna wanted to seize this opportunity of being able to leave Zilpha in James's past and be done with her. Specifically, when James is walking out and he says, we'll board when I return, there is a grin on Lorna's face. And I can only read that grin in one way, which is she is happy she got what she wanted out of this situation. And what she wanted was for James to leave Zilpha behind and pay her more attention. So it's interesting that we saw this very virtuous Lorna uh, take her first step towards being uh, not so virtuous. And it's mostly interesting because there was De a definite shift with James when Zilpha let him know that she killed Thorne. We may see more of Zilpha. One of the things she says to James is, an eye that I did not know I had has been opened. So now Zilpha has had her third eye opened, just like James. I'm not sure what that means, but it means something. It's why it was said. After James kills Dumbarton is when he confirms with himself that Zilpha is in the river. She starts to sing to him and he sees her. She says, James, we will speak again. We may just see Zilpha in visions, or there may be a lot more to Zilpha. Zilpha in the upcoming seasons. If we go back to episode six and we see uh, James and Zilpha when they're about to have sex and James gets scared and he jumps back. Now there's a flash in this scene where James sees himself kissing Salish. We could look at it as perhaps James was trying to hook up with Zilpha because he wanted to piss Horace off. Uh, this could definitely be part of it. James did not like how Horace treated Salish. Zilpha is Horace's daughter. I'm quite certain that Horace wouldn't appreciate it. And perhaps this was his plan. And he came to a point where he realized that that really wasn't best for anybody. Uh, James doesn't like to mistreat people. We know this. We've seen people do James wrong, specifically Thorne and Helga. And James does not hold grudges. He treats people very fairly. And so maybe James walked away from Zilpha because he realized he wasn't really in love with her. And it was more of of this game uh, that he was playing to get revenge on his father. 
We get quite a bit of Robert in this episode, and I'm loving that they brought Robert into the main cast of this show. The reason why I am I love this relationship between James and Robert is because the interactions we've seen with James and Robert are kind of heartwarming. You know, James uh, wants to be a solid role model for Robert, and we know this because in the first episode, he makes this statement, I'm not fit to be around children. And we see this in the way he talks to Robert. He talks to him like a father would talk to a son. But, you know, a son for James, I would, this would be no good. This would, this would put a commitment in James's life that he had to always honor or we would question what is he doing? He's putting his, his son second and why is he doing that? But by giving James a much younger brother, we can see James act as a fatherly figure, but without James uh, being obligated to always put Robert first. So they're giving James's character a lot of freedom to be James, because James is a badass motherfucker. They're not going to take any of that freedom away from James. James is still going to have the freedom to be this type of person, but we're going to be able to see a really heartfelt, true connection relationship with James. And the other thing I love is they've already shown us that Robert uh, truly is just as confident and capable as James. So as time does go on, I am excited to see how strong Robert and James working together, how strong they are going to be. I don't think there's anything that these two together will not be able to accomplish. We also had the whole incident with the influence wrapped up. This is part of the storyline that James is definitely going to leave in London and that we will not see again in the second season. We know that this storyline was wrapped up because we see Chichester grab James's and Godfrey's letter. The last words from his mouth are justice. So letting us know that those slaves received the justice that they needed and this storyline, this conflict for James is over and behind him now. And then there was Brace, who James left behind. I didn't find this too shocking, and I, I, I think really the main thing behind this is when James said to him, I'm going to my mother's land now. I think that's a big deal for James. I think he, he definitely keeps Horace and his mother separate. He definitely identifies more with his mother, and I just, I don't think he wanted Brace around in America reminding him of his father. And I also think there's truth to what James said about Brace. Brace is by all means a servant, and I think James knew what he was talking about when he said Brace wouldn't know what to do with his freedom. It was harsh, but James is an honest guy. He's not going to tell Brace, I'm doing this for you out of mercy, if he's not. James, he can't do that. He, he needs to tell Brace the truth. In the last shot of Brace, it's interesting because it's with Chichester and Brace is like totally effed up in the head when Chichester first walks in. He barely responds to somebody, a stranger being in the room with him. But we get a smile, a teary-eyed smile out of him before the scene ends, like, like everything's okay for him. And he pets his dog and he's happy with the dog. So I think we're supposed to assume that uh, that Brace is good with where he is. James did leave him the house and everything. Again, James is a, a kind, good guy. He is not in league with the devil. And so Brace is also left behind and, and we won't be seeing him again. So what questions did they leave open for us? Well, honestly, we still don't know what the hell James is. And yet there's, there's still reason to doubt that he is human. Now, in this episode, he tells Sir Stewart that he did not die in Africa. But I don't necessarily believe him. He tells Sir Stewart that he did not die in Africa, that an African saved him, cured him, and showed him to himself. And that all sounds right. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm not convinced that James hasn't died yet. But I am convinced of something else. James is confused about what James is. It's when he's insisting that if Zilpha killed herself, he would hear her singing from the river. And Lauren is like, but dead people don't sing from the river. And James says, but if they don't sing, then how do I hear them? So when he first said this, I took it completely as James being a smart ass, because he is a smart ass at times. But then I then I, I, I remembered a line, one of my favorite lines from the first episode, when James is in the meeting with the East India Company, and he says, are you deaf? Because because he keeps repeating himself and they keep asking the same questions. And it was interesting, when James says this line, he is being a smartass, but it's also an actual question. Like, he's confused as to why he's clearly stated his opinion, but the East India Company keeps asking him about it. It just literally confuses James. He's like, I've clearly stated how I feel. Why do you keep questioning me about it? And so... If we look at this line that he says to Lorna when he says, but if they don't sing, how do I hear them? You know, I wonder how much James knows what James is. And I think this is what 
I've been missing this whole this whole season. I've been looking for some kind of definitive answer for James to tell us, show us what he is. But after I heard that line, I started to think maybe James isn't completely aware of what he is. Maybe things have happened to James and they've happened so fast that he is not completely aware of what it is. I think this is a definite possibility. We'll definitely get more answers in season two. And even if we don't get all the answers, we will get this answered. We will be able to find out in season two if James is unsure of exactly who or what he is. So as far as season eight, it is definitely going to be in America. We are going to see uh, James and Robert's relationship advance. We will see a relationship moving towards romance, if it, even if it doesn't get all the way there, between James and Lorna. I'm not sure how well that relationship is going to work out, if it'll be a permanent one, but they will uh, play that up through season two. And we're also going to get more about Salish. This part of James's visions uh, has not been resolved. Uh, we are going to, I imagine we'll get more visions. It's a style of the show. I can't see them removing that. And they're definitely going to revolve around Salish. And I think we're going to find out more information about why Salish tried to drown James. And we're going to find out more about who, what James is and what abilities he actually has. Because especially with the fang shot in the vision from episode seven, I it's hard for me to believe that James is not more. So I think we're going to see uh, more of that. I want to thank everybody, all the Taboo fans, for watching the videos I put out over season one. It was really great having so many people that loved the show and enjoyed the videos and commented. It was really fantastic. A special shout out to two Twitter Taboo fans, Delaney's Ho and Scarlett Drake. I will be doing one more video on Taboo. I'm going to watch the entire season again now that we have a beginning and an ending and just to see if anything else sticks out to me or if there's anything else to comment on. So there will be one more video on season one. And if you have any questions about any of the episodes in season one, just go ahead and leave them in the comments. I will be glad to answer them. If I could get about 10 or 15 questions, I'll do a video where I just answer your questions. If you give me 100, I'll answer all 100, as long as they're decent questions.